This video is about polar coordinates and polar curves. Hopefully you um, are a bit familiar with this from your um, trigonometry class. But even if you're not, I'm about to go through it and review it a bit. So here we go. Um, traditionally, we use the Cartesian coordinate system, um, which is where we can identify a point in a plane with an X and Y coordinate, these values. It takes two values to identify a point in the XY plane, also known as the Cartesian coordinate. Um, this would be our point P, maybe, and this is our X axis, and this is our Y axis. Okay, we can um, talk about describing this point in a different um, plane. This is the what we call the Cartesian coordinate system. Um, or the XY plane. Um, the other coordinate system we're going to be looking at is the polar coordinate system. And it is formed by considering a point, which we're going to name O. Um, usually the origin is how we think of that, this point here. We call it O. We name some point O. And then we, we draw, um, it's a the point is considered to be a pole, and from that point, this pole, we draw a, a ray or a half of a line, and typically it's drawn like to the positive side of the x-axis, and this half line is called the polar axis. And this point right here is known, this is the pole, okay. Now, to identify some point in the plane, so let's pick the same point P. How would, could we identify this? Well, we rotate up through an angle till we reach this point P. So from the polar axis, we, we rotate it up to here. And it has a length. Uh, so this rotation is through the angle theta. And the length of this from the origin or the pole to this point P is defined to be R. So instead of X, Y coordinates, we get the coordinates R comma theta. And this describes a point in the plane. The easiest way to really um, see this is to um, plot some points. So in example one, we're just gonna plot a few points. Um, point A, let's represent it on the polar coordinate system. Um, has the coordinates 1, 5 pi over 2. So r is equal to 1, this is our r, and this is our theta. So go to the angle theta, which is 5 pi over 4, which is right here. This is where 5 pi over 4 is. And these rings that you see are, are distances. So like uh, you can label it just like, it's just like, how you can say, okay, I'm gonna make this be one and this be two, or you could relabel it and say, okay, I'm gonna make this be 0.5, I'm gonna make this be one, and this is 1.5, and this is two. The scale is kind of how you determine it to be. I'm gonna let um, each, each ring be one in this case. So well, maybe I'll let each ring be half so that I'm gonna mark this. Um, we go to the angle five pi over four, so we go from zero all the way to five pi over four, so here we are, and then we move out from the pole a distance of one. So since I've said I'm gonna let each ring be half a half, uh, unit, this is half and this is one, and this is where I'm gonna mark point A, okay? B is at the angle three pi, and you're gonna go out two units. So here's zero, we would rotate all the way around to get to two pi and then to get to three pi all the way here, which would be coterminal with pi. And then from the pole, we're gonna move out two units. So this is one, two, and this is where we'd mark point B. All right, C, we're gonna to go to the angle negative two pi over three. So. This means we're gonna move clockwise because counterclockwise is positive. So when we move clockwise, we're gonna to go to two pi over three, which will be over here. Let's see, two pi over three is this far this way. So it's gonna be negative pi over three, negative two pi over three is here. 
And then we're going to go down two units. So from the pole, we're going to go one, two, and this is where C is. All right, D, we're going to go to 3 pi over 4. So go to 3 pi over 4, which is right here. Okay. Now we would move up this direction, except for R is negative. When R is negative, you go in the opposite direction, um, 180 degrees opposite from there. So um, I would go to 3 pi over 4, right? And then I'm going to go in the opposite direction, um, 3 units. So I'm going to go uh, 1, let's see, that is 1. Am I on the wrong one? Um, two, three, this will be it. All right, cool. So this is D. And so these, uh, this is how you can uh, plot points in the polar coordinate system. Now, there's a big difference or a major difference in the Cartesian coordinate system, X, Y, and the polar coordinate system, um, R theta, and that is that um, one, there's only one set of X, Y values coordinates that will describe a point in a plane in the xy plane. However, to describe a point in the polar coordinate system, um, there are many different coordinates that can describe that same point. So we're about to see that in example two. Okay, so in example two, what they gave us was um, two points in the plane, E and F, and they said represent the given points in three different ways. Um, so let's see. Let's start with E, which is right here. So. Um, this time, I'm going to choose to let the, um, the units be 1. So this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5. Okay, so to represent point E, it's, it's from the pole, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units up. So R is going to be 5. And this is, this is hard to see, but this is pi over 6. This is the angle that it's at. So one way we could represent this is 5 pi over 6. That's our r, and that's our theta. Go to pi, pi over 6 and move up 5. Okay, very good. Now, if we want to describe this another way, an alternate way to describe this could be to say, okay, well, let us go in, do I have that at? Yeah, this is pi over 6. Um, we could go um, maybe to, let's go to the opposite. Um, let's do something crazy like go to, well, we could still call it five, but we could call this negative angle instead of positive pi over six. Let's see, we could go all the way around to here, and that would be neg also known as negative 11 pi over six. That's an alternate way we could name that. Or what if we wanted to go to 7 pi over 6? Let's go to 7 pi over 6, which is over here. But let's move in the opposite direction. So to do that, we could say negative 5. That is three different ways that we represented that. Um, let's do one more, just so you can see that, that this is uh, also possible. Uh, we could just simply add a rev revolution. We could add 2 pi to or subtract 2 pi and get a coterminal angle. So if I take 5 and if I go to, to uh, pi, pi over 6, but then I add another 2 pi, let's say 2 pi plus pi over 6 is the same thing as times 6 times 6 is the same thing as 12 pi. So this could be also written as 13 pi over 6. So actually I wrote that point E in four different ways. And there are more. All right, let's do F. Here's the point F, and, and I'm going to do it the most straightforward way. Let's see, how far is it from the pole? It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Is that right? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4. It is also 5. Is that 5? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It is. Are these on the same? Yeah, they didn't really look like it, but it is also five. Okay, five. Um, and then what is the angle? Three pi over four. I know those are hard to see, but this is three pi over four. All right, what is an alternate way that we could write that? How about um, five 
if we went if we called this out negatively negative 5 pi over 4 okay 5 negative 5 pi over 4 that's another way we could call that out or we could go to um, to here um, 7 pi over 4 um, we could go to 7 pi over 4 which is right here, but we could go in the opposite direction. We could say negative five. Or we could go to seven pi over four, but we could call that negative pi over four. Go to negative pi over four and move in the opposite direction, negative five. So there's a few different ways that you could call out angle F. Okay, um, let's see, what's the next example? Now that we see how to plot things, we want to talk about how to convert between Cartesian and polar coordinates. So we can convert these. Um, let's consider the point P in the plane. So here's P. Um, this has made up of the X, Y coordinates, right? So, so from here to this distance on the X axis, this is X units this way. And this is up y unit. So if we we drew a, a, a triangle right here, this distance right here would be x, and this distance right here would be y, and this is a right angle. And um, if we also put on the um, polar coordinates on this, we could say if this is our pole and this is our polar axis, and we rotate it up through this, this is our angle theta, and the distance from the pole to p is r. Okay, so now we've got everybody on there. How do they relate to each other? Okay, um, we know a little bit of trig, and this is a right triangle, and so we can say, okay, let's say, what is the cosine of theta adjacent over hypotenuse, or x over r? All right, what is the sine of theta? The sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, or y over r. We can very simply solve for x and y. And of course, r is not allowed to be zero. Um, division by zero also, that would mean that there's no distance. Um, solve for x by multiplying both sides by r. We get x is equal to r cosine of theta. Multiply both sides by r. We get that y is equal to r times the sine of theta. All right, so this is how, if we are given polar coordinates and we need to convert to um, rectangular or Cartesian, um, this is the conversion we can use. Now let's use this same triangle to make some sense of how we can figure out if we have X and Y and we need to get R and theta, how can we do that? Well, we know the Pythagorean theorem, which says that A squared plus B squared is C squared, so we can solve for R by taking the square root of x squared plus y squared. And that works nicely. So we can find r, and then also if we use some more trick, we notice that the tangent of theta is y over x. And, or um, theta is the tangent inverse of y over x. So this is what we can use um, to, if we're given x and y and we need to get to Cartesian, I mean, to, I'm sorry, polar, we can use this. If we're given R and theta and we need to get to X and Y, we can use this set. So let's just do example three. It says convert three, two pi over three to Cartesian coordinates. Um, this is not X and Y because they want me to convert to Cartesian. So this is R and theta I've been given. All right, so I can just use these real easily. X is equal to R3 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3. Y is equal to R, which is 3, times the sine of 2 pi over 3. Um, hopefully you are remembering some of your unit circle. And this is 2 pi over 3 right here. The cosine is negative 1 half. The sine is the square root of 3 over 2. So x is simply 3 times negative 1 half, or negative 3 halves. y is equal to 3 times the square root of 3 over 2. 
or 3 root 3 over 2. So the Cartesian coordinates convert to negative 3 halves, 3 square root of 3 over 2. All right. Now let's do backwards. What if we're given x, x and y, and they want us to convert to polar coordinates? So they're asking us to convert to polar coordinates. So this is x and this is y. We need to figure out what r and theta are. Okay. R is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. R is equal to the square root of 1 plus 1 or the square root of 2. All right, so R is the square root of 2. Now theta, we know that the tangent of theta is y over x, 1 over negative 1. So the tangent's negative 1. And so we remember inverse tangent where um, is the tangent 1 um, or negative 1 at the 45 degrees or the pi over 4s? It is going to be negative in quadrants 2 and quadrants 4, right? All right. So um, strictly speaking, if we're using inverse tangent and we use our calculator, it's always going to give us this angle right here. So um, this is negative pi over 4 or, or 7 pi over 4. I'll just call it negative pi over 4. Now, I could write this point as square root of 2, negative pi over 4, but is this the right point? Um, when I look where x and y are, I have a negative x and a positive y. This is in quadrant 2, so this is the wrong angle to put in. I must put in the angle that will be give me the correct point. I need to put in the angle that's in quadrant 2, which is 3 pi over 4 or a coterminal angle of 3 pi over 4 would get me that. All right, um, this is the last example on this video, and then we'll take just a quick break. I'll break it into two, but let's sketch this curve. Um, if we have to sketch a polar curve, um, this is one method to do it, and I, I think it's a fine method. We sort of point plot. We say, what is theta? We put in various values for theta, and what is um, r going to be? Okay, so let's see. We're dealing with the cosine curve, and its period is 2 pi, so I'm going to break it. I'm going to divide that by 4 and get the major, the important points. 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And so let's just see what our r values are. Um, when I put in theta is 0, cosine of 0 is 1, I get 1 plus 1, r is going to be 2. When I put in pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, I'm going to get 1 plus 0 over 1. Pi is negative 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, 3 pi over 2 is 0, 1 plus 0 is 1, and back around to 2 pi, I'm at 2. So what's happening here? All right, at the angle 0, which is this way, I'm out here at 2 units. At the angle pi over 2, I'm up here at 1 unit. Okay. At the angle pi, I'm back here at 0. So what does this look like? Well, this is what's happening here. I move up here to 1, and then it moves back here to this. It kind of makes like a little heart shape. And then when I get to 3 pi over 2, I'm moving out to 1. And then I get back to 0, I mean, I get back to 2 when I'm around to 2 pi, which is coterminal of 0. So you kind of get a heart shape. These are called, this is an example of a cartoid. Um, they call it a car, cartoid because it's shaped like a heart. Um, let me show you quickly with our calculator. If you wanted to, to graph this, you can do that pretty easily. Um, make sure you're in, what mode am I in? Am I in, I'm in polar, so that's what I want to be, okay. Um, so go to y equals, and what I want to put in here is 1 plus cosine theta, 1 plus cosine of theta, and then if I go to my window, um, my theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi, I like that, um, and then my x is from negative, let's just do, um, negative 4 to 4, I guess I'll do that, and then my y will be negative 4 to 4. Let's see what that gives us. So this is the shape it makes. Now, um, it's a little 
it's a little more round than that. So if you want to make it look more round, you can hit zoom and then number five says zoom square. It's gonna make it, it's gonna round out your circles and your cartoid shapes and whatnot. Okay, that's the first video for 10.3.